Shalom, Shalom, Israel. It's Brother Darash again. We back with uh, some more world history. Like we do every Wednesday, we go into uh, world history, how it pertains to the scriptures, how it pertains to the Bible, and um, also related to our forefathers. So last week we went into the Byzantine Empire, uh, the Byzantine Roman Empire, which was Eastern Rome at the time, or the East Eastern Roman Empire at the time. Um, this week we're going into the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, so first thing I want to do, let's go to um, go to Romans. Let's go to Romans chapter. Fifteen. We'll read verse four. It's the book of Romans, chapter fifteen, verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So it says the things that were written, the history that was written, but it's saying the the things written aforetime, and the things that was written in the past. It was written for us to learn from. It was written for us to gain knowledge, gain information from. Read. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Might have hope. Let's jump over to uh, Job 8 real quick. Job chapter 8. Read that. Book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. So the scriptures tell you, it says, inquire. That means go and look, go and research, find this information of the former age, meaning the past. So the scriptures are, are you, you have a number of scriptures that are it's real heavy on seeking out history, seeking out that information. And there's a reason why. Let's flip over to Job 9. And um, I want to read 21. 21. Verse 21. Though I were perfect, yet would I not know my soul. So it said if I was the most amazing thing on earth, if I was perfect, it said, but I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my own soul. Read. I would despise my life. I would despise my life. And that's what you have a lot of today, especially amongst our people. It's like our, co our culture is literally self-hatred, unfortunately. The music is destruction of our own. You have very few that decide they want to do more conscious type music. Majority of it is hoeing out our sisters, killing all our brothers, banging on niggas, sleeping with other niggas females. Yet, well, I did, yet I didn't know my own soul. I would despise my life. We literally, the culture is hating our own lives. So the scriptures tell you, man, go back and read. Go back, seek your, your, your history and find out how great you once were. So we're not even going completely back into, you know, ancient biblical times. This is still fairly recent, but you'll see. Just about a thousand years ago, honestly, because uh, the Roman Empire lasted up until the 1800s. Probably within the last 500 years, we were something special. At least within the past thousand years, we just fell off. We fell from grace. Because when you read about the Holy Roman Empire, um, as we'll get to it, um, it was a lot of us there, too. Not just a lot of us, but a lot of us ruling there, too. And that's what a lot of people don't know. When you think about Rome, when you see all the pictures of Rome, when you see uh, uh, all of the, the emperors in Rome, they exactly. Long nose, pale skin. But the truth of the matter is, a lot of our people were ruling in that time. So we're going to get... Um, we're going to get into the history 
Um, and like I did last week, Lord willing, it gives you a starting point. I want to give people a starting point to jump down the rabbit hole because uh, a lot of people find a lot of different information uh, as it pertains to this this history. Um, and that's not to say, and, and I do want to make this disclaimer, that's not to say every single ruler was black in that time. But we had what's called black nobility, meaning black upper class, black bishops, even black rulers at that time. A lot of people like to bring up one, uh, his name was Septimius Severus. But he, when you research the information, he is a little before actually either the Byzantine or the Holy Roman Empire actually comes into fruition. He was around like 200 AD, so it was right before the Byzantine Empire. So I don't really like to go into that. But you have other ones that were ruling class. So we're going to um, most high will improve that to you tonight. Um, excuse us for starting a little late. We had some technical difficulties. So we got a... Um, there's a few things that I had highlighted that's probably not highlighted here, but I'll try to get the majority of it. Um, Angel, do me a favor. Take us to the PowerPoint. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can highlight it for you. Um, here we go. Let's link this first three. Can you see that, Yatazar? Or it's not clear? All right, give me a second. So read the, read the highlighted part for me. The Holy Roman Empire, a later referred to as the Holy Roman of the German nation, mm -hmm. was a multi-ethnic complex of territories in the Western and Central Europe that developed during the early Middle Ages uh -huh. and continued into the dissolution in 1806 during the Napoleonic Wars. So it says the Holy Roman Empire was multi-ethnic, um, and, it, and, it refer, and it refers to the territories in both Western and Central Europe, and it was developed around the Middle Ages, which is like eight, nine hundred A.D. Um, read the, go ahead, read on. The largest territory of the empire after 962 was the Kingdom of Germany, uh -huh. though it also included the neighboring kingdom of Bohemia and Kingdom of Italy plus numerous other territories, and soon after, the kingdom of uh, Burgundy was added. So when we, s when we read, or when we, as we delve into, rather, the Holy Roman Empire, it was mainly comprised of the kingdom of Germany. Now, that's not just that one little country. The kingdom of Germany was actually pretty damn big. Um, then it shrunk down to little Germany that we know today. Um, uh, let me go ahead and go over so you can see. This is the Kingdom of Germany. Up here, over here, um, Burgundy down here had been added later on. Italy was a part of it. Uh, Bohemia. So all of this area within the red lines was the Kingdom of Germany. Now here's the thing. When you think of Germans, you think Slim Shady. Right. Like, those those are, um, th yeah, Hitler. <laughs> you know, you think, but you, you think of Edomites. You think of white people, right? Let me, there's actually a few things that I want to go to here. Um, I'm going to go here first. So here is a statue I couldn't find the actual um, the actual source, but uh, I was able to pull up the picture nonetheless. So this was a statue of a black amor, which is a moor, um, in Hab Habsburg's coat of arms. So again, you see these, uh, this statue is in Germany. It was someone of a noble class, of nobility, and he looked like us. And we're going to go back to um, uh, Nature Knows No Color Line because they talked a lot about it, too. I believe 
Let me see if I can go. I'm going to go to my email real quick. And uh, we're not talking about him just yet. <coughs> here we go. The German families. So we see here, um, down here, page 86, German families with names of Negro origin. So this is more uh, Walt. This is just more and Graf Moore. And when you're looking at these images, because it's black and white, if you, um, I don't think I have any of the actual images on here, but the white people aren't even colored in. All of these individuals are, the reason why they look like this is because they were colored in, because they're black. So they're showing you the different noble families, the different royal families in, uh, this one's Fran uh, France, but um, these ones are Germany. Different, uh, what do you call it? Um, different areas, sections of Germany. And let me go to this one as well. So same thing. All of these, you know, so-called black or Negro, whatever you want to refer to them as. German families note the Negroes wearing the crowns and the Archbishop Mitri up here. That's what they're talking about. Referring to their nobility and the, the noble class. So a lot of people believe that just because it was Germany, a lot, what, what a lot of people tend to forget is that <coughs> just about all of Europe was black. Spain too. It wasn't until later down the line that these um, fairer skinned individuals started to invade. And when they got there, they infested it. It's kind of like if you have a roach infestation, you get like one or two of them in there and then they start laying eggs and now you have an infestation. That's what happened with these people. Literally a lot of people got pushed out of Europe because you had these invaders that were of a lighter skin. You could bring it back to us for a minute, Angel. You had these invaders that was of a, a, a lighter complexion, and they were um, breeding, for lack of better words. They were breeding, and they continued to grow and grow and grow, and we diminished at the time, and they literally bred us out. They pushed us out of our land, or they just flat out conquered it, one of the two. That's, the original Greeks were black. The original Romans were black. The the original a lot of the people in Iberia or uh, 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 um, excuse me, Britain and England, United Kingdom were black, Spain black. Okay, yeah. 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 Um, so with the yeah, I believe so. So with the so what the brother was saying was um, even with the names of certain uh, certain of the lands um, like Britain, Britain has a an origin uh, as far as the I want to say it's the root word of it that actually refers to black. So um, as far as the, the land is concerned, more than likely, that's what it was. Uh, I don't remember the exact meaning uh, of Britain, but uh, I do recall something of that nature. I, I'm actually going to uh, research that and most high willing uh, maybe be able to bring it out next time. But when you when you research all of this, it's crazy because um, a lot of the books where you can find this information are either unheard of or very expensive. One of the two. Um, give me a second. I think we've shown. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. So um, take me back to the PowerPoint. And let me see if I highlighted it over here. Ooh, I didn't. I think it's, this is what I wanted. Yeah, this is what I wanted right here. Oh, that's actually at the very top. Okay, perfect. I want you to read. Uh, okay, 
all the way down right here just to Italy. Yeah, from the top. The Holy Roman Empire was mainly Germanic conglomeration. Con conglomeration. Okay, con. Mm -hmm. Of lands in Central Europe during the Middle Ages. So again, we're reading because I, I just want to get the... Um, I want to get you guys to understand the history of Germany, or the, uh, excuse me, the Holy Roman Empire, which was mainly the Germanic territory. And when you research the information, you find that a lot of Moors, what they refer to as Moors, black people, were in Germany. So it's like, okay, well, how did it go from looking like us to looking like them? Because, again, a lot of people look at Germany and they, it's, like he said, Hitler, Eminem. Even though German Germans to this, I'm not. I'm not white. I'm German. You're, you're white. Stop lying. <laughs> I'm not white. I'm Russian. It's the same damn thing. But originally, Germany uh, Germans rather looked like us. So read. Oh, go ahead. Read on. It was also known as the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. Mm-hmm. It originated with the partition of the Frankish Empire following the Treaty of Verdun in 843 and lasted until its dissolution in 1806 during the Napoleonic Wars. So this is just a brief history on <coughs> the startup of the Holy Roman Empire. So as you continue to read on it, it gives you pretty much the territories. And then you get a lot of the history. It tells you, And then it goes down to um, um, what it was composed of down here. Uh, where it says most of the Holy Roman rulers, were, uh, the subjects were Germans. And again, when you see a lot of the original Germans, they was us. So a lot of the, the emperor, uh, excuse me, a lot of the rulers in the Holy Roman Empire looked like us. Because it says a lot of the rulers and even the subjects were German. But the original Germans didn't look like what they look like today. Let's go, oh, actually, let me keep it here, keep it here. Um, so this one, it says, the statue of the Black Moor that I brought up earlier, holding the Habsburg coat of arms. Again, Habsburg, uh, where did you go? Well, basically, it's going to tell you that Habsburg is uh, part of Germany. I decided to get the, um, the actual location up, but um, clearly it's not there. Um, and now, here's a ruler. Um, I think it is, let me get it for you. Here it is. Let me get it up here. Um, so here's a ruler known as uh, Charles V. He was also um, known as Carlos V. To start at, we'll just, uh, we might just read the first paragraph. Let me see. Da, 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 da. We may read the first two, but uh, read the first paragraph for me. Bring it back to us, um, Angel. Charles V was ruler of both the Spanish Empire from 1516 and the Holy Roman Empire from 1519, mm -hmm. as well as of Habsburg, Netherlands from 1506. He voluntarily stepped down from these and other positions by a series of abdictions between 1554 and 1556. Through inheritance, he brought together under his rule extensive territories in Western, Central, and Southern Europe and the Spanish colonies in the Americas and in Asia. As a result, his domain Spain, his domains spanned nearly four million square kilometers and were the first to be described as the empire on which the sun never sets. Sheesh, read on. Charles was the here of three Europe, uh, Europe's leading dynasties, the House of, what is that, Valois, Burgundy, Netherlands, well, yeah. Habsburg, Holy Roman Empire, the Trastamara, Spain. He inherited the Burgundian Netherlands and the French Comote as uh, com Comote. Comote, yeah. Uh, it ain't English, though. So. As here of the <laughs> house of uh, Valois Burgundy. Uh, Burgundy. Read. From his own dynasty, the Habsburgs, he inherited uh, Austria and other lands in Central Europe. He was also elected to succeed 
his Hasburg grandfather, Maximilian I, as Holy Roman Emperor, a title held by the Habsburg since 1440. So we see that this man, um, Charles V, he was a, a big deal. He was definitely a big deal. Now, take me to the PowerPoint real quick. I want people to see something. Um, let me see if I can blow. Uh, I can't blow up this image, can I? If you look at this image, he looks nothing like us, right? Now, let me see if it got to my email. It did. Perfect. Now, Carlos Quinto. A panel from the painting in the Larco Museum in Lima, Peru. This panel depicts the last Inca emperor and the subsequent first European emperor of the Inca, Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Unfortunately, you can't see it that much, but you can see it enough to see his ass ain't white. You can see it just enough. It's because the light is hitting the, the top of him, but you can look at his hands, and you can even see a part of his face up here. And this is in Peru. You can't say, oh, this is something you just found on the Internet. No, it tells you exactly. It, let me let me go back down so you can see. It gives you where you can find it, the Larco Museum in Peru. So we see that even you can go back and honestly, um, even with like Charlemagne, it's um, well, I believe he he was one of the first emperors of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, I forget, he went by another name as well, and some people speculate that he was deviously. Um, named as St. Maurice. Um, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm not going to quote it as a fact if Charlemagne was indeed St. Maurice, but even a lot of the saints at that time was black. And actually, th uh, they said that the name Maurice was a, 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 a kind of like how you have Morris, Morrison, Moore, Maurice, the reason why they named him that was because, again, he was a Moor. He was black. Now, again, I'm not going to definitively say that these were one and the same people, but a lot of, but for sure, a lot of the saints back then were black too. But Carlos V, or Charles V, excuse me, another European, because people would be quick to say, oh, white people did this and did that. No, our people was ruling over there too. We ran a lot of Europe before the ones that you see now. And a lot of people don't know that. Since the Absolutely since the beginning, but you know, as far as our people know now, um, we was running this way before them. That's what a lot of people don't understand. But again, that's that's the big issue. Go to um let's go back to Job. We're gonna read twenty four first and then we're gonna uh jump nine and twenty four first, then we're gonna read uh twenty one. This is the book of Job, chapter nine, verse twenty four. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not where and who is he? So it says again. The Most High gave the earth for a time into the hands of the wicked. And they said he would do exactly what's going on. He was going to paint himself to be the rulers. Always had been the rulers. They got the balls. They got the gumption. They got the audacity to say that damn Egyptians were white. And it's crazy because that was the one thing our people did get upset about. I think it was the movie Gods of Egypt. That was the one time that they got upset. And it wasn't that the Hebrews and the slaves were white. It was that the Egyptians were white. But they got so much, they have such audacity that even something as is, 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 is blatant as that, like we know for damn sure the old Africans was black. They painting them white. They got the, the chick that was, um, that played Wonder Woman. She also played in like a few of the Fast and Furious. They, 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 had an image up the other day. I guess she's supposed to be playing the lead role in some movie uh, where she's supposed to be playing Cleopatra. Uh, 
whether Cleopatra was black or not, I'm not 100% sure. But a lot of people believe that she was. I was, um, there was a, it was a while ago, and I saw it on the, I had pulled it up on YouTube. It was on the news. They said that they were able to restructure, looking at the skeleton, um, of King Tut, and they made King Tut, this was like a little chubby, fat, little white boy. I was like, damn, y'all got some nerve. Yeah, they do say a lot of the Native, the, uh, to this day, a lot of the white people that are Native, that claim to be Native Americans, they swear up and down that, oh, I'm this, I'm Cherokee, I'm th the original Native Americans looked nothing like that, but uh, but a lot of them that for, yeah what they call the <laughs> what they call the five dollar Indian that's real. But uh, the scriptures say the earth was given to the hand of the wicked, and people be like, well, that doesn't say it was given to white people. It says the earth was given to the hand of the wicked. Let's do some reasoning who the hell runs the world Drop the mic. Who, who runs the world like that's what when that's when you start using deduction it's like okay he said the earth was given to the hand of the wicked okay so wicked people were going to be running the world hmm who runs the world well damn it does look like white people or jewish people still white people but which are white people, but swear they're not. And it says they will cover the faces of the judges thereof. So the original rulers, it said they would literally cover their faces, meaning they, they would either, whether it was literally the removing it, like they did, like what they did with um, the, 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 the Sphinx. When you read about the history in that, the original statue or the, the yeah, the original statue of the Sphinx he had a um, a big broad nose, and so they decided to knock it off. And they said, "There's no damn way we're gonna let them know that they was rulers here." Yeah, the the the, the uh, but I, was the was the Sphinx wasn't a, it wasn't a pyramid in itself, right? It was just a massive uh, statue. Okay, yeah, but they broke the nose because they were like, we're not going to let them know that this was them. They just do that stuff. Like this. It's nothing new. This is not. And what's so crazy is I think one of the funniest things to me because they go so hard, especially on like our, our, our 10 tribes, on Hispanics. Um, they say, they're not our fucking people. They, they enslaved us. They did this. They did that. And I'm like, do you know how many niggas fled to Mexico, fled to those 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 um, villages, tribes, whatever you want to call them. Do you know that there's this book called Black Indians, and it's it's a really good book, where it talks about we were being enslaved by Hispanics, but it says that we did we were like that because the Spaniards that came over here to conquer made you guys enslave us, and they said they was getting pissed off because. They were like, okay, you want us to call them slaves? Okay, cool, we'll call us slaves. Hey, slave, do you want uh, you want to take my seat when we eat? Oh, you don't treat them like that. You treated them like family. They're like, well, shit, what do you, how, do you how do you treat them? So they were trying to condition black, in or they were trying to condition Indians, which, let's be real, the whole Mayan territory ran way the hell up. You read the devastation of the Indians. I think it was the Incas that ran from, like, Mexico way the hell up here, right? Yeah, the Incan Empire, and then you got the audacity to try to differentiate one from another. I'm not Salvadorian, I'm Mexican. Well, before you were either of those, you were Incan, and all you, you ran from the ass of Mexico way up to, like, Montana. So stop playing. You're all the same people. So they would try to differentiate, oh, because they're in America, we're calling them Indians, but we're calling them Hispanics and Mexicans below the border. It's all the same people. And we literally fled to all of those different tribes and villages 
same damn people, but they tried to cause that division, and that's why to this day they're like, well, y'all enslaved us. Well, go read about the history of that enslavement because it wasn't really slavery, and a part of it was because you guys was forced to do it. But from there, as when you read in the devastation of the Indies, you read about how much bloodshed and torture was done to our Native Americans, you see how they were slowly wiped out. You had a lot of these actual white people coming in and raping the women, and then you started having lighter skin, fairer skin Native Americans, and now all of a sudden Native Americans are, they think they're white. Or it's rather, white people think they're Native American. Um, but again, it's nothing new. They've literally been, uh, scriptures say that they would cover the faces of the judges. Anything that was royal, anything that was special, this is what they did. Nothing different than the in the Roman Empire, because you can read a lot of that a lot of that history. You can find a lot of information. Matter of fact, I'm mad because I, I haven't finished this book, but there's a, a part in here, and I'll read it real quick because it's real short. Um, it says Moorish blood came into the English royal family. This is from um, Nature Knows No Color Line, page 87. Moorish blood came into the English royal family also. So they're telling you that. Moors or blacks were also royal in Britain, in England. It says Elizabeth, daughter of Edward the Fourth and mother of Henry the Eighth, had several Moors in her family, along with, uh, uh, excuse me, among these Count Moore and Count Maurienne. Um, there is also an Almoravid or Almoravide, which says Turton is distinctly uh, distinctly Moorish. So as you continue to read on, they, they, they have from black rulership in England to Germany to France to Italy. And the proof is in what they refer to the coat of arms. When you look at those shields that they had created, that they had uh, uh, fashioned, it's a bunch of black people on them. Yeah. He's a part of that they are they play a huge role. A huge role in the everything foul. <laughs> Those the Rothschilds, the the uh, what were they, the Bilderberg groups, JP Morgan, their family. Man. All of the f all of the fake Jews. Yeah, absolutely. They um, I, I I believe they tried to they. A lot of the individuals now, the the, the um. Jewish individuals, they try to tell you, well, in this time, this is where, you know, Jerusalem was. This is where this was. This is where that was. So, every and, and it's so crazy because the scriptures tell you when Israel comes back into their land, it will be at peace. How the hell are the real Jews there when the land still ain't at peace? Doesn't make any sense. Go ahead. Oh, the Bohemian? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how one would have a piece of it. Uh, yeah, the Bohemian Grove, I've heard of it. I haven't really looked much into it. They are, yeah. Absolutely, but you would never know because look how much power they have. So again, it's really deduction. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. Well, damn, who runs the earth? 
whoa, damn, look at the earth. I could see that. I could see it being, well, yeah, this, that makes sense. And then he covers the faces of the judges. Oh, damn. These people did come in, and all of a sudden, the Egyptian pharaohs were white. Um, every biblical figure that was worth something was white. Moses. Christ, David, Solomon, how, I don't know, but somehow, some way, they all were white. In the movies, they absolutely. Those become, those are the slaves. Well, well y'all can play the slaves. Yeah, y'all good. Y'all good with that. Now, that's real. It's programming, though, because that's what, like, right, like, to this day, if you talk to anyone about Rome, the Roman Empire, they think white. That's what goes on in their mind. And again, that's not to say that there were some rulers that were more than likely white in that time. But the majority of us, the majority of our people, uh, excuse me, um, a lot, I won't even say the majority, but a lot of the rulers in that time in the Holy Roman Empire, they were not white. But it's very difficult to find a lot of that information because either the books are really expensive um, or it's just hard for you to find the books. Something as simple as last week when I went into it, I said when you, when you research the, um, the, they call it the Black Madonna, which is Black Mary and Black Jesus, they, paint, they, they give us pictures of, of white Jesus. In the Vatican, they have a black Jesus that they worship. The po yeah, the Pope. And the black, exactly. That's what they, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what they say. But no, the fact of the matter is, no, they, it's because they know. And it's crazy because the scriptures tell you these things. But that's why it's, it's important to really delve into your history. It's important to really look into this information because, like the scripture says, I could be perfect. It said, but if I didn't know, re really know who I was, it wouldn't matter. Because you look at a lot of people today, it's like they gave us a culture. Your culture is destructive. Your culture is demeaning. You demean each other. That's black culture. Your culture is over-sexualizing women. Your culture is preaching infidelity, deadbeat fathers, broken homes, drama. That's an Hispanic culture, too. It may not be to the magnitude of us, but y'all really right under. Yeah, and uh, so what the brother was saying was, yeah. divide, yeah, absolutely divide and conquer. So what the brother was saying is crazy because when you look at the European countries, they all look at themselves and they say, European, we are, we're pretty much united. He said, but when they started conquering all of these other territories, especially on this side, they started to divide us. They started to give us borders. They started to give us races. And basically essentially pitted us against each other because then they acted like one was better than the other and the other brother um was saying that it's this thing called divide and conquer and that's true but that's why it's important when you find out who you are because there's just uh, there's a certain there's a certain sense of pride that you get especially knowing that you're an israelite this is not even talking about like roman history because again you can continue to look. You can research about Charlemagne. You can research about uh, uh, Charles V. Um, actually, it's right here. Let me see some. You can, um, here we go. Um, Charles V. Uh, you can even look into the other kings, uh, Henry IV, Frederick I, Frederick II. Um, and not every single one of them will be black, but you'll, you'll have a lot of more emperors 
that we don't know about. We think that every, everything that ruled was white. Everything. Kings, emperors, pharaohs. That's our mentality. But if we knew how great we were, we would want to do better. Because right now we're in a place where it's like, well, shit, anything's better than where we were. Because we was at the bottom of the bottom. Not understanding, like, no, this is nothing near what we should be doing because we were at the top. Then we fell to the bottom. We should be trying to rise up. But how, how much damage do you think it would do to... I'll say to, to white people. I won't say European because of original Europeans is black. How much damage do you think it would do to white people for our people to say, mm, we ain't doing that, um, that destructive stuff anymore. We found out that our history is so rich and we getting back to that. <clears throat> We're not working for y'all no more. We're not going to buy into y'all. Uh, uh, We're not going to be gangbanging and killing each other no more. We're not, we're not doing any of that. Do you know how badly that would hurt their pockets? Because they thrive off of us being subservient to them. We know we're better th than this. We should, uh, we should start our own leagues, for example. You know, that would hit somebody's pockets. Because let's be real, the majority of any sport, the superstars and the ones that you want to watch, it's very rare that you get someone who's not black or Latino. It's very rare that you get someone white. Right now, it's what? In basketball, Luka. Luka Doncic. And honestly, if he was black, he'd just be another pretty good basketball player. But the fact that he's not black makes him stand out even that much more. It's very rare that you get those. In boxing, you have like one white dude, Caleb Plant. He's pretty good. Lomachenko, who just lost. It's very rare that you'll want to watch one of them. Uh, football, they just started, not just, the uh, past couple of years they started getting pretty good, but the majority of who you're going to watch is not them. Then let's not even get into the, all the inventions that were stolen from us. We're, if, if we knew the history, how rich our history was, we would, and we decided that we want to get back to that tired of being mediocre, if we shunned and boycotted the blue faces and the Cardi B's, they'd be in trouble. That's part of the reason why Israelites are terrorists. We're domestic terrorists. We ain't shot at nobody. We ain't threatened to kill no. Well, we haven't. We ain't threatened to kill nobody. Um, what else? We ain't we ain't had no public cross burnings. Literally, the, the, the only thing that we do is say, hey, you guys need to learn to and, 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 and want to separate from your oppressors. And we're terrorists. That doesn't make sense. But they understand that. And, it's, and, and, and the big reason is because we're teaching our people to get their mind right. We're teaching our people to do better, to want to do better, to want to be better, to want to separate from the system and get back to get back to where we once were. So again, I didn't plan on keeping this um, this lesson too long. Again, it's just a starting point for you guys to go and do more research. And I'm going to push it again. This book right here, Nature Knows No Color Line talks a lot about they refer to them as Moors or they refer to them as Negroes rulers all throughout Europe France Italy Luxembourg Germany England Spain goes through all of them it talks about how we had bishops there it talks about how we had uh, knights there it talks about how we had emperor or kings or rulers there we were noble, and a lot of us don't even know that. They think we was peasants, serfs in that time, slaves to people in that time. No, we was ruling. 
the Holy Roman Empire, we was we was thriving there too. The Dark Ages where well, we don't really know where all the records went. Nah, it's because y'all wasn't on top. And you can't tell it, tell it. People are calculated. You go ahead and tell them, man, you know, y'all used to rule Europe. That's actually what the Dark Ages was, but we didn't want to give y'all that information because you start feeding somebody that type of momentum, they're going to be like, well, shit, what's stopping us from doing it again? Ah, the movie coming to America, yeah. Right? It's 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 nothing like it's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's it's nothing new though. Um and they'll continue to show it so long as we continue to want it. And that's why it's so important. And um, we're going to get all the way through here. I'm, I have to check the curriculum, but eventually we're going to circle back around, come back down the line. We'll be back at the Roman Empire, um, Byzantine and Holy Roman Empire again. And there's going to be more information. But again, this is a starting point. I'm giving you references, even giving you websites. If you didn't see the websites, you have um, Holy Roman Empire Association dot com. It's where you got the information of uh Carlos Quinto. Um, Wikipedia is a good starting point because it gives you the sources from where it got its content. Um, where is it's right here? Um, C.S. McGill, which is actually one of those uh, educational books that you get in school. So it's it's a uh, they actually have a website and they have information on it, C.S. McGill, and uh, you can find out information about the Holy Roman Empire. Um, real world history dot, I think it's www, real, real dot history dot www, I believe. Let me double check. <coughs> Excuse me, it's realhistory.ww. And um, you can find the inf you can find a lot of information on there too. Um, and then they have man. It gets difficult when you're trying to find information in mainstream educational type sources because it's very biased in itself. But um sometimes you have it. You can sometimes find that information. Um, so definitely do your research, and, and even the ones that don't have that stamp of approval, look at where they got their sources. Perfect example, the, the photo that I showed you was on Pinterest, but they told you, you can go find this in Peru. It's in the museum in Peru. You can find that for yourself. If you think I'm making it up, go down there and look. So find secondary sources that lead you to a primary source, but do your due diligence and research your history because it's very, very important. So as we can see, Holy Roman Empire, um, let me give it a, I do want to do a, I do it over here. Here it is. Uh, I guess a quick synopsis. Again, it started around eight, eight what is it, the ninth century AD, which is around like 800 AD, 820. And it lasted about a thousand years as well, all the way up until 1806. Um, it spanned from, excuse me, it spanned from territories, or excuse me, it spanned from territories that are now known as present day Germany, Switzerland, uh, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Czech Republic, Slovenia, Austria, Croatia, Belgium, Netherlands. It was all of Central Europe. It was a pretty damn big empire. And it was running uh, contemporarily with the Byzantine Empire, more so the, the latter end of it, which was also a huge empire, again, ruled by Moors. Byzantine was more so ruled by Moors. That was like almost exclusive. 
but the Holy Roman Empire it was kind of back and forth, but we had a lot of our rulers there too. And then it fizzled out around early 19th century, which was 1800. But you can go back and find this information, find this history, read about, just, just you can literally type in black coat of arms. If Just so for, for individuals that don't know, type in black coat of arms. You'll get a lot of images, may lead you even to an article. If not, Google black coat of arms just in uh, search or information. They'll give you They'll give you a starting point. So find your starting point, go down that rabbit hole. Our biggest thing is this book here anyway, All Praise to the Most High. This, this is what we focus on. This is what we worried about. But two things. One, because our people like to hear the more scholastic side and, know, you know, we kind of got to prove a point sometimes. Like, no, we do history as well. Not just out of here, but outside of here. We, we give you that information, too. Um, and two, after we fled out of Jerusalem, well, where did we go? Some of this history tells you that. Oh, damn, they fled into Iberia. Oh, they fled into Spain. Oh, they fled into England. Damn, and they were ruling there. Oh, they fled into West Africa. Oh, they fled into different areas. of. Uh, uh, they fled into North Africa and migrated down. They were ruling out there, too. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, the Byzantine Empire was mainly Moors. Oh, the Moors were comprised of Jews, uh, uh, Arabs, and Africans. Okay, so they were ruling there, too. A, a portion of us. Oh, damn, the, Roman, the Holy Roman Empire, too. We're all over the place. But this gives you a starting point so you can start going and, 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 and researching and finding that information for yourself. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and cut the class short today. Um, and like I said, do your due diligence. Do your research. See if I'm lying. We try to make sure that, you know, we give, we give the people enough to feed them and then for them to want to go seek out more. We want you guys to want to go seek out more. Go find this information. So with that, we're gonna um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna close it out. We're gonna say shalom and we're gonna pray it out.